Okay, today we're going to be making a super soft melt-in-your-mouth chocolate cake roll topped with a decadent dark chocolate ganache that honestly just takes this cake roll to another level. So to get started, you want to preheat your oven to 170C or 340F for the fan turned on, also known as convection mode, and line an 18 by 13 inch tray, also known as a half sheet baking pan. And you only want to line the pan long ways, leaving the sides exposed. Now you just want to set your tray aside for now and next we're going to combine our dry ingredients and you don't need to sift them just yet. So I've got 80 grams or two thirds of a cup of all purpose flour, 16 grams or two tablespoons of cornstarch, 25 grams or a quarter cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Once that's all in then you just want to use a whisk to mix that all together until it's well combined. Okay, now you just want to set that aside for now and next in a small bowl combine 52 grams or three and a half tablespoons of unflavored vegetable oil, I use canola oil, 45 grams or three tablespoons of room temperature milk and half a teaspoon of instant coffee powder. Give that a little stir and then set it aside for now as well. Next we're going to separate the yolks and whites from six large eggs and I just like to do this with my hands. I find it much easier to do it this way and because our hands are soft the yolks are less likely to break. Now while you're doing this it's really important not to get any yolks into your whites otherwise your egg whites won't whip up properly later on in the recipe. Okay now once the eggs are separated then next in a large bowl combine one tablespoon of warm water, you don't want it to be boiling so just warm, and 66 grams or a third cup of white granulated sugar. Give that a little stir and then next add in all of the six egg yolks along with two teaspoons of vanilla extract or essence and then using a hand or stand mixer on a medium speed whip that together until the mixture becomes thick and pale. It should take roughly about five minutes but this will vary depending on the size and strength of your mixer. So once it's done you should be able to kind of pick it up like this and it should form ribbons which sit at the top of the mixture for a few seconds before being absorbed back in. Okay now you just want to set your egg yolk mixture aside for now and next in another medium to large sized bowl you want to add in all six egg whites and then using a clean hand or stand mixer on a medium speed whip that for 30 seconds until the egg whites become frothy. It's really important to make sure that there's no fat or egg yolks on your mixer attachments. Now once it's frothy you want to gradually add in 133 grams or two thirds of a cup of white granulated sugar while continuously mixing. What we're doing here is creating a meringue and it's really important to add the sugar in gradually so that our meringue can maintain its volume as the sugar slowly dissolves. Now once all the sugar is added in you just want to keep mixing until you reach soft peaks which should roughly take about 7 minutes. Now usually for a sponge you want to whip your egg whites until you reach stiff peaks so that you have a nice strong meringue but because we want our cake roll to be very bendable without breaking, I find that only whipping your egg whites to soft peaks is much better because we don't actually want a super strong meringue. So you just want to make sure that you keep checking your egg whites so that you're not overbeating them and then once they're done they should have peaks which fold over like this. Now once that's done just get all of the egg whites off of the attachments because the rest of the mixing will be done by hand and we are almost there so we're now going to bring everything together. So start off by adding in half of your egg whites into your egg yolk mixture and using a spatula gently fold that in until it's just combined. You do want to be very gentle here because we want to try and retain as many of the air bubbles as possible. Once that's done you want to sift in your dry ingredients from earlier into the batter and again fold until it's just combined. Next you want to add Add in the remaining egg whites into the batter and fold with the spatula until it's just combined and you can't see any more streaks of egg whites. Now the last step is to add in our milk oil mixer from earlier and fold that in until just combined. This is going to help thin out our batter a little and the extra folding at the end is also going to make sure that we have nice even air bubbles throughout our sponge. So once you're done your batter should have a very smooth flowy consistency like this and if it's still a little bit thick it just means that you need to fold it a little bit more and now all that's left to do is to evenly distribute it into our lined sheet pan from earlier. Then to get rid of any large air bubbles I'm dropping my tray on my bench top a few times and then tapping the bottom of the tray as well. Now if you do see any large air bubbles come to the top then you can pop them with a toothpick but apart from that this is ready to go into the oven for 18 minutes. So 18 minutes later the sponge is done and you know it's ready when you touch the top and it makes a little indent which slowly springs back. 
So you just want to let it cool in the tray for about 15 minutes. And while it's cooling, we're going to very lightly grease some parchment paper. And this is just going to prevent our sponge from sticking to it when we come to rolling it. So because I have a large sponge, I'm going to overlap two sheets of parchment paper so that it's big enough. And to each sheet of parchment paper, I'm just using my fingers to spread out a very small amount of unflavored vegetable oil. Again, I'm using canola oil. I find that by using your fingers as opposed to a pastry brush, you can spread the oil out much thinner because we only want a very thin coating on the parchment paper. Now, once both sheets are coated, I'm just overlapping them and that little bit of oil also just helps to kind of stick them together so that they don't move around. So 15 minutes later, I'm just running a thin knife along the long edge of my baking pan to release my sponge cake and then I'm just turning it out onto the greased parchment paper and to make it easier you kind of just have to do this very quickly with a lot of confidence. Now once that's done I'm just trimming the parchment paper that's along the edge that I'm going to roll my cake roll so that there isn't too much of a gap and then I'm just going to go ahead and gently roll the cake roll while it's still warm and this is just going to help set the shape of the roll so it becomes easier to roll it again without breaking later on once we've filled it. Okay, now you just want to let this come to room temperature, which should take about 30 to 45 minutes. And in the meantime, we're going to prepare our ganache and whipped cream. So we're going to start with the ganache first. It's super easy to make. All you have to do is to a microwave safe bowl, add in 250 grams or one and a half cups of semi-sweet or dark chocolate. I like to use 50% dark chocolate and 240 grams or one cup of cream. Whipping cream or heavy cream will be fine. And then you just want to place that into the microwave and heat it up until the cream is hot and the chocolate begins to melt. You can do this over a stove top too, but just be careful not to overheat the cream as you don't want to burn the chocolate. And then you just want to simply stir until the chocolate is completely melted and the mixture is smooth. Now you just want to set this aside to cool. I like to just put it into the fridge to speed up the process. And next is our whipped cream filling. Now you don't want to whip your cream too early, so I'd say to whip it once your ganache is cool and you're just about to fill your roll. So to a medium sized bowl, I'm adding in 400 grams or one and three quarter cups of cold whipping cream, 17 grams or two tablespoons of powdered sugar, also known as icing sugar or confectioner sugar, and half a teaspoon of vanilla. And then I'm just using my hand mixer to whip that until I reach stiff peaks. Whipped cream can over whip really easily, so just keep a close eye on it when it starts to thicken up. So my chocolate roll has cooled down now, and so I'm just going to gently unroll it and start filling it. Now before filling it, I'm just going to trim off the ends, but I'm not cutting it off straight, I'm doing it slanted. And this is just going to add a nice shape to our cake roll. So first I'm going to spread out a thin layer of chocolate ganache, which should be cool by now too. You only want to use about half of the ganache and save the rest for later. And then on top of that, I'm going to spread out an even layer of the whipped cream. Now you just want to leave a little bit of a gap at the end of the roll, because as you roll the sponge some of the cream will get pushed out so leaving a little gap just helps to ensure that you know you don't have too much cream coming out of your cake roll. Now to roll the sponge I'm just gently bringing it up with the parchment paper and then I'm pushing the end down into the cream to help me create an initial tight roll and then I'm just rolling it until I come to the end. So when rolling you don't want to push down too hard but then you also want it to be tight so only push gently as you're rolling it. Now once you come to the end, use the parchment paper to help lift up the roll and place it on a wire rack with a tray underneath and then remove the parchment paper. Now with the remaining ganache, you just want to spread it out over the top of the roll using an offset spatula or knife to help spread out the ganache. If the ganache is a little too thick, then you can just heat it up a little to help make it a bit more spreadable. Okay, so that is our chocolate roll all done and now you just want to pop it into the fridge for an hour to set before slicing. So once set, transfer the cake roll to a serving plate. I like to just use two offset spatulas to help me do this. And then using a serrated knife, first slice off the edges so that you have some nice clean cuts on each side and then it is ready to serve. This chocolate cake roll is so light and fluffy. The chocolate sponge layer is so soft and goes so well with the whipped cream. And that chocolate ganache on the inside and the top really just adds a wonderful pop of flavor. Mmm. 
Oh, it's so good. It's light, it's airy, it's fluffy, it's creamy, it's chocolatey. It's just so good. I could literally have another two slices without feeling sick. It's that light and it's not too sweet as well. So that is it for today, guys. If you do decide to give this chocolate cake roll a go, then please do leave a review on my blog. It really helps my content out and I absolutely love hearing from you guys. I'll see you in the next video.